praise. But this morning in John 6, and I'm reading from the NIV version, Jesus is about to feed the 5,000, and it is written, Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. And Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Verse 25, when Jesus found, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures eternal, to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Jesus at this moment begins to talk about where that seal of approval is placed. He begins to talk about the fact that he is the bread. If we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, we shall have eternal life. He begins to talk to them about things that will sustain them for eternity, from that moment until eternity. And as he begins to talk about drinking of my blood and eating of my flesh, there's some things that those who follow him have difficulty dealing with. So it's written in verse 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Verse 61, aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say this. He says, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, right after he said this, many of his disciples, people who followed him, Turn back and no longer followed him. Brothers and sisters, I want to teach from this subject. They lost me. That's what Jesus is saying. 
they lost me. I didn't lose them. And for those who were here this morning and heard what the Lord said, that he's pleased with those of you who've made God a priority, you've gained him. You've gained eternal life. You have food that sustains you. You have the wisdom from God that allows you to deal with these people in the streets. Many of us are having to deal with people in the streets, but we are not turning to God to give us the ability to deal with people in the streets. So a lot of times what happens in this moment when I look at what's going on in this passage of scripture, they were rolling with Jesus because of what he did, not because of who he was. They wanted the fish and loaves. So they followed him. How many times have you uh, had people who've been around you uh, to get to be with you, to, to hang with you, and you later find out they're with you only because of what you can do for them, what you have access to. But when he began to share more about himself, they didn't want him. They didn't want him at all. The scripture says that when he began to talk about the things of the kingdom, things of the spirit that that would sustain the people and actually teach the people how to fish, they did not understand it, nor did they even take the time to try and understand it. Many turned away. Brothers and sisters, you got to be okay when people leave you. You got to be okay when they don't like you no more, when, when you get hip to the fact that they are only rolling with you because of your fish and loaves. At some point, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we, we think people uh, um, see what we see. Uh, we think people see our inadequacies. You know, when you go into your house or your apartment and you begin to look around and, and you see the things that you need to repair, you see that things need to be painted over here. There's a crack there. And, and, and all you focus on are the inadequacies of what's in your house. And then when people come into your house, some of us, the first thing we say, oh, yeah, I got to get this painted. I got to fix this and that. They don't even see any of that. They just see the fact that you have a house. Brothers and sisters, we have got to get to a place where we no longer look at our inadequacies and see the grace of God on our lives that covers our weaknesses because his grace is sufficient. Some of us are still grieving the fact that when people leave us, when people no longer have anything to do with us, a, a boyfriend leaves, a husband leaves, a wife leaves, whatever it might be, we are grieving that situation. But God is showing us when they get their spill, well, they, when they got their spill of the fish and loaves that we had to offer, they chose somewhere else to go to get some chicken. They didn't want no more fish and loaves. They wanted some chicken. Some folks want a potato salad. They couldn't get potato salad where you were doing fish and loaves. The fish and loaves were going to help them, but they want a potato salad. Some folks might want Chinese food. And they left. But when you begin to show more of yourself, uh, of your relationship with Jesus and how much you love Jesus and how Jesus has given you the ability through wisdom to be able to do certain things, they did not want it. Many, many, it was thousands of people who fell away, turned away. And guess what we learned in the scripture? Jesus didn't run after him. Jesus didn't run after him. He turned to his, his, his 12 disciples and said, well, you leave me too. Peter jumped up and said, oh, no, I'm with you. Uh, Simon said, he said, I'm with you. I'm there. But there was one within the 12 who wasn't really with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we got to be okay with a small circle. We got to be okay with, with this two or three folks who, who's in that circle, because quite frankly, in the text, if you go a little further down the road, when Jesus begins to reveal his full glory of the 12 disciples that actually went to the Mount of Transfiguration, there were only three who went with him. He took three people with him to see him in full glory, where God says, this is my son. Hear him only. 
Brothers and sisters, sometimes the way modern society is, it's having us to really value the opinions of other people and what they think of us. And quite frankly, what we are falling to is manipulation because we value what other people think. When they fall away, when they leave, then you're hurt by it. God is saying, you got to know who you are. You got to realize the grace that's on your life. You got to realize, hey, his grace is sufficient in my weakness. Yes, I see blemishes on myself, but God covers me. God gives me an understanding that in my weakness, he is strong. His grace is sufficient. As I sit here and share the gospel with you about what's going on, yes, Jesus had a lot of folks who were rolling with him, but many of them fell away. And today, someone struggling with someone leaving, someone falling away, God is saying, they lost you. You didn't lose them. They lost you. Do you know who you are? So I have some main points this morning that I want you to write down. I want you to tweet. I want you to share with people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I'm not going to hold you long. His word is simple. His word is to the point. Point one, I want you to know something. Your center of focus, and this is not the point, but your center of focus has to change about yourself. So see grace, not inadequacy. So point one, know who you are. Grace on your life. When we don't know who we are, we'll have to have people tell us who we are. Other people will begin to give us an identity, their identity. We don't know who we are, so we're tossed to and from. We're chasing after people to tell us who we are. And God is saying, you're mine. My grace is on you. No matter what you're going through, I'm with you. I'm going to give you wisdom. He says to seek me first, the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you added on to you in that moment of that grieving is a word that lets him know that you first are with him and second that he is with you his word never changes so when you feel all alone will you feel like everybody's turned their back on you he's saying i'm with you many many left my son they wanted my son to follow them but my son knows who he is. So my son st stood his ground and continued to walk out in purpose. So this morning, I'm imparting something in the people this morning. Walk in purpose. The enemy is trying to distract you. The enemy is trying to tell you you're not nothing. The enemy is trying to get you to focus on what you've lost. And God says, let it go. Let it go this morning. Let it go. He says, I'm with you. You know who you are. You have an identity in me. And walk boldly. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear. Because I am the Lord. And I will fight your battles. I will fill you up. My cup will run it over in you. So point two. The Bible tells us that many departed and followed no more. So point two, let them go. Let them go. Let, turn to your neighbor and say, they lost me. Let them go. Somebody's got to let them go because you're consumed with people who are not consumed with God. And when you're consumed with God, people will not want no part of you. They will see the grace on your life. They will see the blessings on your life. They're going to want some of those fish and loaves, but they are not going to want to try to do what you did to get what you have. You have surrendered your life to Jesus. You are a worshiper. Those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. That is what relationship is all about. It's an inside thing. I, I can't explain it to you. I can only live it before you. When everything seems rocky, when the storm is raging, all I do is place my eyes on Jesus. Peter got out of the boat. He came to Jesus. He walked on water. 
the water was still raging around him and he kept his eyes on Jesus and God is saying to us right now when the storms are raging when the waters are going all over the place when it seems like the water's coming in like a flood the standard that God raises is his son Jesus Christ he raised his son from the dead so that we could overcome and he's saying keep your eyes on Jesus step out of the boat walk on water don't you worry about a thing yes things may not feel easy around you but you just keep your eyes on Jesus Trust in what Jesus is going to do in your life. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. They left. They fell away. But Jesus kept on moving. You got to get up and keep on moving in Jesus. You got to get up with purpose. Brothers and sisters, point three. Don't waste your energy on people who just wanted the appetizer of fish and loaves. Many of y'all know about appetizers. It tastes good, but it doesn't fill you up. Jesus was saying to them, look, I'm giving you the appetizer. I'm giving you some fish and loaves. You think that's your main meal, but that stuff is going to spoil. I want to give you something that's going to sustain you. I want to give you the ability to fish for yourselves. I want to put the power of the kingdom in your hands. But you got to want me. You got to hunger for me. Don't just worship the appetizer. Yes, I'm going to give you an appetizer. But I want to get you the whole enchilada, the whole entree. Someone turn to the neighbor and say, I want the whole entree. The whole entree is to eat of his flesh and to drink of his blood. It is the consuming nature of Jesus Christ. I want all of you. I don't want some of you, Jesus. I want all of you. I want to make you a priority in my life. I want you to be the number one in my life. I'm going to do what you have done. Your work is important to me. Don't waste your energy on people you've lost. Place your energy on the one who saved you. Let him lead you. The word of God tells us in James, the book of James. Pure religion is this. It's undefiled. It's to serve the widows and orphans. It means to serve. It means to serve. The greatest among us are those who serve. And then the second piece of this is to not allow this world to pollute what you learn from the Lord. It's about relationship. All of this other stuff is polluted. All of these doctrines of devils, all of these so-called traditions that have nothing to do with relationship. And God is saying right now, where the spirit of the living God is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom to worship as you want to worship. Freedom to move with him as he moves. The Father says, I have created each one of you in my image. And you are unique. You are a unique creation. Don't compare yourself to no one. How you worship your relationship is between you and God. Don't let someone tell you your relationship is inadequate. Knows who you are. And then you'll walk boldly when people try to walk away and leave you. Your focus has changed because you realize they lost me. Someone turn to your neighbor and say, they lost me. You got to believe that. They lost me. And guess what Jesus did? He kept on moving. You got to know how to keep on moving when those closest to you leave you. You poured and poured and you've helped and you love. And what you didn't realize is you had the grace of God on your life. 
you had the love of God that was flowing through you. That's all you need. Don't question yourself. Just do you and Jesus. Just do you and Jesus. Pure religion. Pure religion is about a relationship that is unpolluted by the world. And point four, you know, if you really want to know who is with you, point four, focus only on the Father. The scripture says, Jesus said that the Father would draw those to him. And the moment in scripture when he said, only those who come to me are drawn by the Father, many left. This is a hard teaching. Who can understand this? I can. Because the Jesus that I seek, you don't want him. And so if you don't want him, I don't want you. I know who I seek. And I know I love like he loves. So if you don't want him, cousin, brother, blood brother, friend, whoever you are, and you choose not to call me anymore because I'm quote unquote too holy now, don't call. Take my number out of your contact book. I don't need you. I need Jesus. Someone turned to the neighbor and says, I need Jesus. I don't need you. I love you. But I'm not chasing after you. I love you. Good riddance. But I got work to do. The folks who are rolling with me, Jesus said, I just want to make sure if you're rolling with me for who I am and not what you think I can do for you. If you're really rolling with me because I am the son of God and not someone who's going to give you fish and loaves. I want to teach you how to fish because I want to put the keys to the kingdom in your hand. Do you want the keys to drive this thing? I'll be the motor. I'll be the oil. I'll be the fuel. But I'll let you drive it as I lead you. Do you want to lead? Which is to serve. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is a repellent. Many of us in the summer months will get that off and spray on us to keep the mosquitoes, those blood sucking pestilence. Keep it away. Well, if you want to keep away blood sucking humans, blood sucking humans, S U C K I N G, humans, put the whole armor of God on you his word he's a repellent of those who have ulterior motives who want to just get with you who want to hang with you because of what they might be able to get access to some of you are connectors some of you have influence you may not see yourself as an influencer but you can float in different circles you are welcomed in different circles you have the ability to talk to people at different levels they like you you may not be rolling with them all the time but you have access some people want to roll with you because of the access you have now i want you to think about something when you have access to the kingdom there's keys that's handed to you and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven they will see so many things happening around you but they only want your fish and loaves you gotta be okay to let them go here's what people with ulterior motives do because as Jesus is the repellent when they leave you they still focus on you but you never followed them. They wanted you to follow them. And that's what manipulation is. And when you don't follow them, they're still consumed with you. They say all kind of things about you. But the one thing they can't say about you is that you did not love. 
that you did not walk with integrity brothers and sisters you ever notice that folks no longer want to hang with you get with some other friends and all they can do is focus on you and talk about you wondering what you doing how you doing it I can't believe that what you doing hadn't failed yet they're so consumed with you that lets you know what was in their hearts the world is about manipulating you when you don't know whose you are you will be manipulated because you'll need people to give you an identity you will begin to value what they think about you and when they leave you you'll run after them saying why you leave me man shake the dust off your sandals and keep on moving so this morning brothers and sisters they lost you you didn't lose them and I would much rather have two or three people who will roll with me and seek Jesus with everything they have first than I have a whole bunch of people who are just trying to get fish and loaves they can have the fish and loaves but I'm gonna give you the keys to the kingdom and to give you the keys to the kingdom you got to embrace Jesus he is the truth the way and the life no one gets to the father but through him do you believe do you receive it you've been eating off of your fish and loaves and they've been good right you have your fish and loaves some of you have learned how to fish some of you have lost some people can I get some hands of people who, who have experienced loss folks who have left them for no reason whatsoever and it's troubled you it's bothered you and God is saying this morning yes it did bother the son because he loved them all but he had a purpose and his purpose was only to work with those who are drawn to him by the father focus on the people who want Jesus and Jesus will give you what you need not only will you be able to give them fish and loaves but you'll be able to give them the things that will sustain them but you got to know who you are can I get some hands this morning do you know who you are do you know who you are are you gonna walk with him this morning fish and loaves at some point they're gonna spoil and many people in this world are chasing after fish and loaves. The fish and loaves may look like getting that money. Fish and loaves might be, I'm seeking this position. Anything that gives me an identity, quite frankly, what happens is we're worshiping the fish and loaves. We're worshiping the job, the money. But that stuff is controlled by people. And if you're worshiping the stuff that's controlled by people, you will be manipulated by the people who control the stuff.